In this video, I will be demonstrating how relative frequency can be used to calculate probability. I'll be using 184 marbles, specifically the mass of the marbles. This will allow me to draw conclusions through developing a frequency table and relative frequencies. What is a probability, for example, of pulling a marble between 5 and 5.3 grams? This is a relative frequency as probability. The probability can be determined statistically from the relative frequency uh, in situations where we do not have a mathematically predictable outcome. The masses of the 184 marbles are recorded in column B from B2 down to B185. In this particular case, we could insert a chart and for reasons that escape me at this particular moment the app is giving me a histogram chart even though there are 184 marble masses in B. In an earlier video I noted that uh, getting a histogram to generate for more than a hundred items uh, did not seem to be possible. Either there's been a server-side change on the app or there's something about this data that's allowing Google Sheets to go ahead and generate the histogram of the marble mass. Either way, it's possible to generate this histogram, and you can see it there. It's a symmetric heap, a centralized heap. But this doesn't really help us get directly to the relative frequency. Um, you could derive it from this chart from the heights of the columns divided by the total sample size. But I want to go ahead and be able to get those relative frequencies to display on the graph. So I'm going to set that, hist that histogram aside. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate the relative frequencies. And I'm going to set the intervals, the classes, the, the width of each uh, element on the histogram. And to do that, uh, what I'm going to do, and there's a link to this part of the book, but it was also covered in an earlier uh, supplementary video. I'm going to go ahead and make a frequency table for this data. The smallest marble mass is 4.4 4, uh, grams and the heaviest uh, or most massive is 6.5 grams. That's a range of 2.1 grams. I've decided to use seven classes. No particular reason for seven. Uh, that's a little bit less than what Google Sheets will choose which will be based on the square root of n. But uh, I want a few uh, uh, fewer classes and 7 will go nicely into the range of 2.1. It'll give me a, a width of just 0.3 grams. And the way you set up a frequency table in Google uh, Sheets is, or any other spreadsheet is you set into class upper limits. So the first class is going to run from 4.4 .4 to 4.7. 4.4 4 .4 plus 0.3. So that first one is going to be 4.7. And then the next one is another 0.3 up at 5.0. And the next one is going to be 5.3. 5.6, another 0.3 up. 5.9, another 0.3 up. This one's going to be 6.2. And then another 0.3 would take me to 6.5. That last the class should be equal to the maximum seen right there. If they're not the same, then you've made an error somewhere along the way. The frequency, I'm going to go ahead and, again, in Google, in Google Sheets on the desktop, you'd have to select the cells you want the frequency function to go into. But here in the app, I haven't had to do that. In fact, it doesn't seem to work that way. So I'll put in the frequency function, and I'll first give it the data. I'll go ahead and I'll try to drag it in. At about 185 rows, so I'm watching the row count. There it is. And then comma, there's a comma in there. Get back into my cursor. Scroll back to the top of the sheet here. And now I'm going to put in the class upper limits, and I'm just going to press the green check. And I 
the first thing I tend to check is I've got the sum function in here to tell me the sum of the frequencies because the sum of the frequencies should be equal to the sample size and there's 184 marbles so that's worked out also so that's another check that my frequency table may be correct now for the relative frequency I'm going to take equals the frequency divided by the total number of marbles and I'm going to go ahead and lock the 10 using mixed addressing in spreadsheets. This will keep that 10 from changing when I do a fill down in a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and select, tap again in that shadow area, autofill. And you can see that if I click out and click back in, this the denominator stays F10 as I go down. This is because I locked the 10, but I didn't lock the uh, frequency value. So you see F5 divided by F10 in this cell. So those are the relative frequencies, and the relative frequency is the probability. So these are the probabilities expressed in decimal form. You could convert to, to a percent form, but I tend to leave them in decimal. So we can see that for these marbles, the class of marbles from 5.3 to 5.6 is about 17% um, percent of the marbles will fall into that range. So the, the probability that a marble will be in that range is roughly one out of six. That's close to the one out of six number, about 17%. There's a one out of six chance that a marble will be between 5.3 grams and 5.6 grams. Technically, that doesn't include 5.3, but does include 5.6. So because of the way the intervals are constructed, this interval that we're looking at right here uh, this 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 interval there is the interval is the 32 marbles that are greater than 5.3 grams but less than or equal to 5.6 grams and that's the way each of these class upper limits works I can go ahead and if I wish and make a technically not a histogram uh, but functionally it'll look like a histogram the columns don't touch each other but uh, it's functionally, uh, this, it tells me the shape still that I would get. And I can see this shape, just as I saw a moment ago. It is a symmetric shape. Uh, it is heaped. Bring that into view. It is a symmetric, centrally peaked, heaped shape. There's a little bit of skew to the right. Off to the right side, there's a bit more tail to the right than to the left. Uh, so it's slightly asymmetric, but it's fairly close to a curve we'll later learn to call a normal curve. So these are the probabilities. The relative frequency is the probability. A 23% chance uh, that will be in this particular category. There's 43 in there. There's about a 40% chance of it being in this particular class from 5 to 5.3. And we can see that somewhat in the relative heights. One of the things that... Um, does not seem to be directly possible on the app is to select non-adjacent columns, the E and the G column. So supposing I wanted to actually do that, I could go into here and uh, I'll tap again at the top, tap on the down arrow, scroll down and uh, try to add in a column to the to the side here if I can. Uh, da, da, da. I can't actually add a column here. So what I'll have to do a little bit of a kludge, but uh, not one we it's not uncommon to have to kludge things in here. In column H, just for the sake of the exercise here, I'm going to type in equals, and I'm going to tap on the class upper limits. Press enter down. I'm going to take that and I'm going to fill that down. Tap, autofill. I'm just copying those down. And then, and this one I'm going to type equals the relative frequency check mm -hmm. just those cells there tap autofill so I've got the class upper limits next to the relative frequency so I can make a relative frequency histogram at this point it'll be technically a column chart um, go back and get me a column chart out of that but I can do that and you'll notice the shape is still the same but the y-axis has changed. Here the y-axis was the number of marbles. So I'll move that over. There the y-axis is the number of marbles. Here the y-axis is the 
relative frequency. There's another copy of that chart tucked away on the side here. Uh, but there you can see the relative frequency is um, on the y-axis. So I can see that about 40% are in the class that ends at 5.3. I again can see the 1 out of 6 in the next class up. So I, I can see that in the classes here. The relative frequency is a probability. So if I randomly pull a marble from the table without looking, I've got about a 40% chance of pulling a marble that's between 5 and 5.3 grams. It works a lot like the dice and the coins and, and the cards. It's just that here we're talking about a set of 184 marbles and the probability of pulling a particular weight. The use of this particular approach is that this tells us where the weights of marbles are most likely to be found. And if someone then brings me a set of marbles that distribute centrally, say, around 4 grams off the left side of the chart, I would suspect that that's a different kind of marble, a smaller marble, because that group of marbles distributes too far below where these marbles distribute. Uh, and that's, that's something we'll develop in a later chapters more thoroughly, this idea that we can use this predicted shape. There's one other thing the shape tells us. This tells us that, at least for the 184 marbles that I'm playing with, the marbles vary in a fairly random fashion about the mean. Why do we know that? Because the shape is basically that centrally peaked heap-like shape, that mountain shape that you get, that we'll later learn to call the normal curve. And those tell you that the process it's producing the data has what looks pretty much like random variation in it. There's a, there, there may be other factors, but one of the key factors will be a random variation that's occurring in the size of the marbles. And that has to do with how marbles are produced. Um, the machines aren't going to produce marbles that are exactly the same mass. I think uh, my students often seem somewhat surprised that the marbles vary as much as they do. They're sort of, when you look at them, they look like they're basically the same size. The assumption is it's a machine, it's all going to be the same mass. That's not true. The marbles actually scatter around an average mass. And so this is a relative frequency as probability. Here we don't have a so much a sense of ways to get an outcome divided by total possible outcomes, although our total possible outcomes are technically 184, and our ways to get are still there. They're up there in the frequency table. There are 73 ways out of the 184 to get uh, a marble between 5 and 5.3 grams. And so that's where the ways to get and the total possibilities have gone. The fraction is tucked away in the frequency table. The denominator is the total possibilities, which in this particular case is 184 marbles. So by making a frequency table, you can calculate the probability for any particular class. In this course, the number of classes are usually specified in the homework and on tests so that if you are asked to make a frequency table, you'll know how many classes to use. And uh, again, there's a link to the frequency function. That link will be uh, below the video, and the spreadsheet will also be linked with its link in it as well.